Hi, welcome to the Core Concepts videos. Uh, this one's on the action potential. So uh, neurons really do just two jobs. They send a signal along their uh, axon and on to another neuron, and they receive signals from other neurons. Now the signal that goes down their axon is called the action potential, and then uh, the communication between neurons is mediated by neurotransmitters. Today we're just talking about the action potential. All right, so to talk about it, we actually have to get closer to this section of the axon. I want to zoom way in. That signal is going to travel down this way, but we're just going to look at one part of the axon. So we'll zoom in closer, closer, closer still. The next slide is going to just show you this cross section of the axon, and you can see that the cell is defined by the lipid bilayer right there, that's one membrane, that's the other side of the axon, and the lipids separate the inside from the outside of the cell. Now, embedded in this membrane are some proteins, namely sodium channels right here and here. Uh, this is actually a, kind of a good approximation of what they really look like if you could see that small. Uh, and these are potassium channels. These are special kind of channels that um, are open, they form their channel uh, only in the response to the correct voltage um, that they sense in their environment. That'll be important later on. Uh, also inside the cell we have uh, uh, slightly more potassium ions, these green dots, than there are uh, on the outside of the cell. Uh, sort of uh, exaggerated things here. It looks like there's sodium only on the outside of the cell. That's not true. There's plenty on the inside there just happens to be more sodium on the outside than the inside. Similarly, there happens to be more potassium on the inside than on the outside. There's other proteins besides the channels that you see here floating around inside the, uh, the axon itself and farther upstream this way, the cell body. Um, the reason that I put them here is because if you add up all the potassium on the inside, all the sodium on the inside, potassium on the outside, sodium on the outside, and you can't there positive or negative charges, potassium and sodium are positive, there's chloride ions you don't see here, they have a negative charge, and all the little electrical charges you see sticking out on the proteins, uh, and you count them all up, positives and negatives cancel each other out, there's just a few more negatively charged particles, partly because of the proteins in here and their associated ions, uh, a few more negatively charged ions on the inside of the cell than on the outside of the cell, and that's what gives the cells uh, what we call the resting potential. It's um, slightly, if you could get a voltmeter and stick uh, one uh, uh, end of the voltmeter in, one probe on the inside, one on the outside, you'd see the cells are, have a slightly negative voltage on the inside compared to the outside. Anyway, that's because of all the charges on everything, including the proteins and all these ions. Um, and that's where we get our resting potential. Let me get those uh, proteins out of the way. Simplify this a little bit. So if the cell, when it's not doing anything, has a resting potential of around minus 70 millivolts, that's actually a pretty low negative voltage, um, I mean a small negative voltage, uh, what's going to happen to it if I uh, artificially introduced some uh, sodium ions into the axon? Don't worry about where they came from right now. Uh, let's say that I put them there. What would happen to the voltage if I put positively charged sodium into this part of the cell? Well, if it's a positive charge, that voltage is going to be less negative. In fact, it may come up to the point where the electric switch on the sodium channels is thrown and uh, they open up. In fact, that's exactly what they do. They open and uh, sodium is going to come rushing into the cell. Now, why does sodium want to be in the cell? Well, for one thing, uh, it's diffusion at work. There was less sodium in the cell than on the outside and sodium wants to be where there's a lower concentration of sodium to make sure everything comes out equally. So dif there's diffusion at work. We can also call that the concentration gradient. But also, um, it's negative on the inside of the cell. 
sodium's positively charged. Opposites attract, so positively charged sodium wants to be in the cell where it was more negative. Um, but you know what? So much sodium came into the cell, all this positive charge, that voltmeter is actually going to go up even further. In fact, so much sodium came into the cell, uh, now it's more positive on the inside of the cell than it is on the outside of the cell. Well, that positive voltage sends two signals. One is to open voltage-gated potassium channels, just like that. The other is to close the sodium channels, so no more sodium's coming into the cell. You're locked out. What's going to happen right now is positively charged potassium is going to leave the cell. One reason for this is because there's less potassium on the outside than the inside, so it wants to diffuse along its concentration gradient, it wants to even things up. The other reason is because now the cell's more positive on the inside, it's more negative on the outside, opposites still attract, so goodbye potassium. That potassium leaves the cell, oh, taking its positive charge with it, so what happens to our voltage? It goes back negative again. In fact, it, it goes back down below where we started at. Now we're in sort of an interesting position. The sodium's on the inside, the potassium's on the outside, our voltage is even more negative. We really can't send that signal again. Uh, for one thing, the concentration gradient's working against sodium coming into the cell, so even if we opened up our uh, voltage-gated sodium channels, it's not going to want to come in there. Um, we're sort of stuck. We need to get back things, uh, get things back the way they were. Fortunately, there is a protein that does just that. This is the sodium-potassium pump. What it does is it grabs sodium on the inside and moves it out, and on the way back it grabs potassium and moves it back in. It works like this. Uh, it literally spins around and grabs sodium, grabs potassium, and puts things back the way that they were. These things are running all the time. Uh, they use ATP, adenosine triphosphate, as the ener energy source, and they work constantly. It takes a lot of energy. That's why your brain, even though it's a small fraction of your total body mass, uses a huge proportion, um, by comparison, of the body's energy. Well, sodium potassium pump's done. We're back at the resting potential, and we're ready, if necessary, to fire another action potential. So let's take a look at what happened over time. We weren't doing anything, cruising along, minus 70 millivolts. Something happened. I told you it was me. I put sodium in, bringing the voltage up to the what we call the threshold for the voltage-gated sodium channels to open. Sodium comes rushing into the cell. It wants to be there because there's less sodium on the inside. And opposites attract. It's more negative on the inside. And that voltage went more positive. Why? because sodium came into the cell. At this point, those sodium channels close, potassium channels open, and all the potassium rushes out of the, not all of it, some of the potassium rushes out of the cell, and the voltage comes back down. Now, uh, the sodium-potassium pump restores the ionic balance until we come back here, until we're ready to fire another action potential. And that's exactly what we saw.